back video game design students. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, a little more of how to get working in Maya and how things work. Um, so first I'm going to just throw in a polygon cube here into my viewport. Um, now what we are currently in is object mode and you can tell you're in object mode because your um, your object uh, will be highlighted all in green like this. There's green lines around everything. Um, I can get into uh, the pieces of this object uh, by right clicking and holding. You, you hold that right click. So right click and hold on the object and uh, you get what's called a marking menu. Uh, and there are all kinds of different things here that we can choose from. Um, primarily we can go into different modes like we can go and select faces and when we do that, it changes a little bit. Uh, now uh, the edges of our object are highlighted blue. Uh, and when you put your mouse on a face, it highlights that face. And you can select one or more of these. Uh, and then you can even, you can still move and rotate and scale that individual uh, face. Uh, so I'm just command Zing to go back. Uh, if I right click, uh, I can also go into edge mode and now you can see that uh, my mouse is highlighting each individual edge. Uh, and to select more than one thing, uh, it's you hold Shift to add that there, uh, to add to your selection. Uh, Shift will also s uh, subtract from your selection. Uh, so if I hold Shift and click on this edge, and then I'm still holding Shift, I can click on it again, and it subtracts. And you can see how uh, on my mouse here uh, that that is all... Uh, there's a little plus next to it, uh, and I'm still holding shift, and now there's a minus next to it to subtract from that selection. Uh, so do be aware of that, especially if you are drawing like a big marquee box like this to select something while holding shift. Uh, see how that deselected these vertical edges and selected all those other things. Um, so I'm still holding it, uh, still talking about edges. Sorry, I got a little bit sidetracked. Uh, and same thing, we can scale and move and rotate these edges. Uh, and right now it's doing pretty much what happened with uh, when I was in face mode. Uh, but if I grab just a single uh, object here, then you can see that I can uh, just scale that one piece. Uh, and then the final one that we'll use in this class from the marking menu is uh, vertex mode. And then this height, when you go into vertex mode, you have little uh, purple dots uh, on every corner uh, of your shape. And you can select those. And just like anything else, you can move a vertex. Um, actually, that's really about it. Because uh, if, if you only have one vertex selected, rotating it doesn't do anything. Scaling it doesn't do anything. But if you have more than one selected, then you can do those things. Uh, the scale tool is actually way more powerful than uh, you might think it is. Uh, it's really more you're scaling that selection so I can make the distance between these two things either smaller or larger. Uh, and same thing with rotating. Uh, so if, I, if I'm just like this having two vertices that's the same as having that edge selected. Uh, so I can add say a third one in and I can just rotate those three things. Uh, but I'm going to undo. So that is how you get into uh, into your object and mess around with some more stuff. Uh, to get back, uh, you right click and then you go to object mode. And now that should deselect everything. So you'd have to select your cube or your object back uh, to be able to move it as a whole. Um, so what else can we do? Uh, we can assign new materials. There's all kinds of things uh, that we can do from this marking menu. Uh, but the main things are face mode, vertex mode, and edge mode. And then you get back with object mode. Uh, do be aware. Uh, there's this vertex face. And if you are either trying to get to face, or sorry, if you're trying to get to face, face or vertex, you may accidentally hit vertex face. And this is what that looks like. Um, so it kind of explodes. Uh, your object. Uh, if this happens, don't worry, just right click, go into any of the other modes, object mode, edge mode, and you'll get back to 
a non-exploded uh, object. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about, and it involves getting into um, into your shape like that, uh, is the extrude tool. So I'm going to switch to face mode, and I'm just going to have a face selected. And I'm going to come up to Edit Mesh, and under Components here, there is uh, this extrude operation. And if I click on that, uh, what happens? Uh, visually, I get this really cool manipulator. Uh, it has all of the three tools in it. That I can, there's arrows for moving, there's little boxes for scaling, and then there's this circle around it. And if I click on that, then I get all of the, uh, all of the rotation circles. Uh, I can get back just by clicking on uh, one of the arrows or one of the boxes. Uh, so what just happened is I created new faces uh, all around this face, and you can see them when you pull them out. So I basically, or I, I created a whole new chunk of my cube, uh, and I can quickly use this extrude tool. Uh, you can see that the keyboard shortcut is, it's actually control E. Uh, normally on a Mac it would be command E, uh, but this one is in fact control E. Oh, I extruded twice there, sorry. Uh, and I can quickly use this to make uh, lots of new geometry to play around with. Um, uh, and even I can select two things and I can pull them off on either direction and do kind of a lot more cool stuff. Let's get off of the 90 degrees. Uh, whoops. Uh, so very quickly we can start making a, a, a much larger 3D model, and it's more than just our primitives. Uh, one thing that everybody, it always happens in my class, is somebody will extrude, and then they go to click on one of the move arrows and they miss. And they come, what they inevitably do is they select those faces again, and go back and extrude again. Please please, please do not do that. Uh, because even though you can't see them, those faces are still there. I, I don't have my cool uh, universal manipulator, uh, but those faces are still there. So if you accidentally uh, click off, just hit Command Z, and you should get back to, I think I went too far. Uh, you'll get back to um, your universal manipulator. Uh, this is also uh, a time to check out your channel box if you accidentally click off of that. Uh, if you can control Z and uh, you can see that uh, all of these extrude faces that I did uh, to get this whole shape, uh, when I add a new one, or when I extrude again, now I have poly extrude face 7. Um, and so if I'm undoing, I can see that that goes away if I undo it. Uh, and also uh, down here, you'll see that it says undo poly extrude. So I actually undid that extrude operation. Um, so please be careful with that. Uh, if you mess up and extrude faces twice uh, later in your modeling, uh, that can come back to bite you. Uh, and it just does weird and nasty things to your model. Uh, so please, please try to be careful doing that. Um, so if we extrude, make sure that you move this out, uh, either with the universal manipulator or even just switching immediately to the move tool and moving that out. Uh, and even if you click off of that and we select those faces again, they're still there. Uh, so you don't, you don't want to have a zero height or width faces. Uh, it just does really bad things to your geometry. Um, so that's it for our marking menu and our extrude tool. Uh, after this, uh, we'll learn how to make a, a yellow submarine.